Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about loops, so there's a lot to get into in this episode, so we're going to get straight into it, but first let's get to the comment question. If you could be famous for one thing, it does not have to be coding, anything uh, technology related, anything at all, what would you want to be famous for? So that's the comment question for today, answer in the comments below. Now let's go ahead and get on to loops. So first off, let me go ahead and explain what are loops in the first place. So loops are a way of repeating uh, something over and over without having to write it out. It's kind of a short way to repeat uh, the same thing in a loop, right? That's why they're called loops. So let's go ahead and insert a script into service script service and we're going to talk about three different, uh, actually four different types of loops today. So let's call this loops script and because there are so many I'm going to barely like just kind of touch on each of those. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. All right, let's start out with for loops. So these are probably the more confusing ones. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just get started. So we're going to start out with a uh, not an in pairs, but a regular for loop. So we're going to say for, just go ahead and write this with me and I'll explain it afterward. Write for i equals one comma 10 comma one do. Drop a line and you'll see an end. Okay, so uh, there's a lot to cover here, but um, first off, what does this I mean? Uh, well, the I is basically creating a new variable. Most people write it as I. You can also write it as index. You can also write it as number. You can write whatever you want. But generally, when you do for loops, people write it as I. Um, and that's because it stands for index, right? Which also means number. Um, so you may wonder why we don't have a local here. And that is just because you don't write a local with um, for loops. It just creates, when you write this kind of for loop, it automatically creates this variable called i for inside of the loop. And what this is saying is we're creating this new variable called i. And it's equal to 1. So the first thing, the first thing without, uh, before the other commas, i is 1. Then we add a comma, right? And then we have a 10. So that's saying we're going to keep doing this. So then you'll notice we add a comma and then a second number. This is saying, when are we going to stop the loop? And that is when i equals 10. So stop when i equals 10. Okay. So um, it's this is i, right? We're setting it to be 1. Stop the loop when i equals 10. And you may be able to guess what the third part is after the second comma. The third number is increase i by 1 every time we loop. So we're gonna add one to i every time we go back around. So we could say print i, and it'll print one, then it'll go back to the top and it'll print two because it's gonna increase i by one every time until it equals 10. So you could think of this as, hey, we're gonna do whatever is inside of here 10 times, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, that is the first loop, and here we go. As you can see, if you scroll up, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it stopped. Alright, you can also start it at 10, and then stop it when it's at 1, and do a negative 1. So this will say, i is equal to 10, we are going to stop when i equals 1, and we are going to subtract 1 every time we go around. So that way, it'll count down from 10. So this can be a little challenging at first, but just make sure you practice, and uh, you'll get the hang of it. So as you can see, we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, there we go, that's the first loop. There is one more um, for loop, and that is the way we loop through a table. So I'm just gonna create a quick table. Um, local my table equals, and then I'm just gonna do five, four, two, 213, one, hello, true. So those are all the values in my table, and we're gonna loop through those. And we start again by using four, but this time we say i comma v in pairs, my table do. So that's a lot to remember there. And then you drop a line and there's an end. But this is saying we're going to loop through every part, everything inside of my table. So that's why we're saying for everything inside of my table. And the pairs is just what you have to write. You can also do i pairs, but uh, we're not going to talk about that today. Just do, just stick with pairs when you're looping through tables for now. Um, but we're just, basically this is saying, okay, we're going to do, we're going to loop through everything in my table and everything that we get to, uh, we can do something with. So, uh, and then this is the index and this is the value. Remember with tables, we have index. So hello has an index of four, right? It's the fourth thing in the table. So one, two, three, four, five, I'm sorry, it's the fifth. And its value is hello, what it actually is. So whenever you use I or V inside of this, this, um, 
this loop, the i will be the index, and the v is the value. So i is the index, v is the value. So you could print i and print v, and then it'll go through every part of the table and do this to everything in the table, okay? So let's go ahead and hit run. And as you can see, we have, let's see, where does it start? One, four, two, two. So this is going to be a little confusing, but as you can see, we have five is hello and six is true because that's the sixth index for true and the value is true. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just keep practicing because uh, you'll get it. It just takes some time. Another thing I quickly want to show you, because we're going to use this a lot, is that you can get a table of all the players in your game, and you just say local players, or whatever you want to name your table, in this case I want to call this table players, maybe with a capital P, equals game.players, okay, because there's a service called players, and you can look inside of here and it has all the players in the game, and you can say colon get players, okay? So that will get all the players in the game. You can also do something like uh, local items in workspace equals to game dot workspace colon get children with open and close parentheses and that gets every item inside of the workspace and puts it in a table so everything in here would now be in a table and last but not least we can say local descendants in workspace equals game dot workspace colon get descendants get descendants and that is everything everything inside of the workspace not just inside of the workspace but inside what's inside the workspace so it would include the spawn location right here but it would also include this decal that's inside of the spawn location it, it includes everything so if i had functions part two inside of functions part it would include that as well so those are different ways you can get uh get different uh amounts of data so we could in theory um, get all the players and then spawn them into a map and loop through all the players and then get their characters, spawn them into a map. We may do that for the final game, just depends on what we end up doing. So there we go. That is um, a way to get some other tables. We're going to quickly breeze through the, uh, the other two different types of tables because we are um, almost at 10 minutes already. So this next one is called a while loop. So you can say while uh, true do. Okay, so this is basically saying, let's add a comment, while condition do okay so it's basically saying uh let's instead of true do one plus one equals equals two do so as long as one plus one is equal to two we're gonna keep doing this and if that ever changes then we're gonna stop so what we can do is we can print one plus one still equals two but if you run that it's just gonna crash your studio so you need to answer to wait because otherwise it's going to be while loops, just um, any kind of loop if you don't have a wait, just runs instantly. It continues looping at a speed that we cannot even comprehend. It just goes so fast, okay? So if we don't tell the script to wait a second each time we go around, then it's just going to crash our computer. So something we could also do is say while number, remember that's how to get how many items of a table, uh, number of game dot players colon get players remember that is greater than zero do so while the number of players in the game is more than zero we can keep doing this uh, we can print number of game dot players colon get players and then we can just wait one second so every second we're gonna just check to see if there are um, if there's more than zero players. And then also, sometimes with while loops, they get a little buggy. So I like to add this here. We add an if statement and we say if number of game.players colon get players, get players is less, uh, less than or, e no, we'll just say equals equals zero then. So if there is only, if there are no players in the game, we can print all players have left the game, right? And then we're going to write something that says break. And break just means, hey, we're going to break out of this loop. Whatever loop we're in, you can use this in any loop, by the way. And it's just saying, hey, we're going to get out of it. So we are no longer going to be inside of this while loop, and we're going to do what's under, the, under it, okay? So that is, uh, those are while loops. If we go ahead and play it this time, we should see a player has joined the game. And it should continue to print every second. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. 
Let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, players join the game. Okay, so I think I'm missing something here. Oh, oh, oh. so I think what happened is um, we hadn't loaded in yet. So we may want to add a couple. Oh, wait, no, I'm wrong. We're printing the number of players. So let's just print. Instead of printing the number of players, we'll just print there is more than one player in the game. Or more than zero players. There's more than zero play. Uh, there are more than zero players in the game. And if we uh, let's go now to wait also. So let's wait five above the while loop, so we can give ourselves five seconds to load in. And then if we hit play, we should after five seconds see uh, there are more than zero players in the game. There are more than zero players in the game, and as you can see, it's printing again every second. It says times two times two, times three, times four, and then if we leave the game, uh, it'll, well, I mean, if there were um, two players in the game or something like that, it would maybe print this, but in this case, um, once we leave and there are zero players, the whole game shuts down so the script doesn't run anymore, but if we were to run the game, so that doesn't does not put our character in the game, uh, and we look in the output, about five seconds later, we should see... Yeah, um, perhaps. Wiring something. Uh, okay, so... Huh. That's interesting. Let me look through this. The statement is true. We have so many things in the output that, it, that it's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah, that's weird. So, it didn't actually print anything. Oh, I know why, because we never even had... Okay, so it can't even enter this while loop, because... Um, whoops, don't click that. How do I... <laughs> Disable breakpoint. Um, so we can't even enter this while loop, because we never had more than zero players. So that's why. Um, so this is saying, while we have more than zero players, we're going to continue to do this. If we ever don't have zero players, we're going to break out of it. And last but not least, there's a repeat uh, until loop. We're going to get, uh, it's kind of like a while loop. Um, it's just another way to do loops. Repeat, print, hello. And then we can um, actually drop a line. So repeat, repeat, print, hello, wait one, until um, number of game dot players when get players is greater than zero. So let me explain this really quickly. This is saying we're going to repeat whatever's in here. We're going to keep printing hello and waiting one second. And you can have as many lines of code as you want in here until whatever the next line of code is. So we're going to stop doing that once our condition is met. In this case, we're going to stop doing it when there are more than zero players in the game. So if we go ahead and run this, we should see it print hello every second uh, after five seconds. Hello, 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 and it's going to keep printing that until a player were to join the game. So those are loops. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and click the like button. It helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or join my Discord server. Either way works. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you're excited for the next episode. I know I am. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the future videos.